Hey guys, I just wanted to do a quick video on uh, my Mad Max Mini DIY electric skateboard. I bought uh, a ton of different parts from different places and I feel like this is my best work so far um, in terms of safety really because I've built maybe 10 DIY boards so far and this one is just really fast. I can really trust it. Today I was going maybe like 25 miles per hour. I mean, I can easily go to 35, but I never had to. It's got enough power. Like I said, if you have a Porsche, you don't go 100 miles per hour every time. The point is that you have that extra power so you can go fast. So I did beat the bus. I beat, the, beat this small car. I mean, it's not a huge accomplishment, but the fact that this, this board can accelerate pretty fast. I mean, you know, if I had a... Larger motors, obviously it's going to go faster, but I did it in a way that felt safe for me, which is really important that, you know, I built this thing. I built the battery um, using open source VSC. I mean, I, you know, I mounted the motor mounts myself, everything. Now, this is a little bit off because I drilled the holes a little bit wrong, but it's not going to affect the performance of the board. Now, when I switch from my um the the smaller board to slightly longer one and especially the drop down this the evo decks from Landi yachts are great because they're made for downhill um so so the curvature is a little bit more curved on back i think and the less on the front but this the shape of this deck allows you to go really fast without losing stability um, but you still have very good um turning radius now the only problem i found with this one uh, I used a battery box um, that's not custom, I mean, it's a little bit too too big, and it's a drop-down board, and, and I literally have, like, when I ride it, like, I literally have just an inch of clearance. Um, so I should have used one that doesn't have such a big drop-down, but I still love this deck. I highly recommend it um because it's so short it's it's a long board but it's a short long board it's 36 inches most long boards are like 38 40. so those two two four inches um makes it much much portable and uh i just really love it i mean i i trust my life every time i go out there guys i am i'm literally risking my whole life so that's why i wear a motorcycle jacket i wear a helmet i wear gloves um, I usually, sometimes I'll wear a knee pads. Um, I should wear knee pads the whole time, but you know, I just don't feel comfortable with the knee pads. Um, but you know, I feel confident, confident, confident enough where I don't have to wear the knee pads. And I know this, this board will never break down. You know, it's, it's not going <clears> to <throat> flip me off the board. Um, so safety is really, you know, in confidence and, I've tested this board so many times, and this is going to be basically a template for all my future boards. So it doesn't really matter. You know, you can get better motors, of course. You can get bigger battery, and you can build the biggest, baddest. But what if you don't understand how VSE works, how the parameters work, you know, how the battery works? Then forget it. You can build the biggest, baddest 9,000-watt skateboard, but you have a BMS <laughs> and you're running your power through the BMS, that's stupid. Because if your BMS um, maximum output is does not match how fast you're going, then you're going to fly off your board and kill yourself. All right, this is just really a prototype for me. And this, you know, just really perfecting the safety part of it. You know, my motor mounts, uh, you know, they, they were becoming loose. That was another huge problem that I had to figure out. So now I just drill holes through through the motor mount holes. And then I just um, put it in with um, some better um, better Loctite. I'm using a Permatex Orange now, thread locker. This seems to work pretty good. But you still have to let it cure. And I get so impatient. I just ride it after 12 hours. And every time it just breaks So. Um, just make sure when you use thread locker on a skateboard, electric skateboard, you have to let it sit for 24 hours. Otherwise, they're not going to cure. The thing is, when you ride these, I mean, I, when I ride, I go for at least five, six miles. If you're going five, six miles, these things are going to heat up to 80 degrees Celsius. And even though these things are rated for that, you know, much higher, it will still break down and, and make your, you know, screws loose. Uh, the motor, the motor mounts are not too bad. Just, just use regular Loctite 242. 
uh, but the motor mounts you absolutely gotta use uh, something a little stronger red or maybe the orange that I got here and make sure you let it cure don't get impatient like me and just start writing it that's what makes it loose um, also uh, the VSC heat sink is a huge deal that allowed me to now just just attack heels uh, my board doesn't slow down so a lot of things I le I've learned from by building this board and this is if you guys been following me you guys know this this whole setup was actually on another deck so I had to try a new deck um, these are just sort of experimental uh, AWOA uh, LED mods now how do you know you've been riding hard if you've been riding five six miles hard your wheels should become like buttery buttery smooth like it's hard right now after I ride these become like jelly bro because everything gets so hot that's how hard you should ride and you know uh, I live on hills San Francisco hills so I have to ride them hard every time. Um, a lot of you might not go through that and you may not be able to diagnose your DIY board. Um, so huge, huge uh, lessons that, you know, if you're gonna test out your boards, you have to do it on huge ass hills. Otherwise you'll never know the potential, uh, what's gonna break. Like if I was riding this on flat ground, my motors, um, nothing will heat up and I will never know the weak points but because i live on you know 30 40 percent grade hills i know that this will break you know that you know so i have to use um so it allows me to make a board that's absolutely bulletproof and this board right here guys is absolutely my best work uh absolutely bulletproof the only thing again the battery box is too long um but it, but the battery box itself is very durable material so it's not going to affect anything inside it so uh, very both proof um, board now my next one uh, is gonna be an off-road version a bigger long board that's the regular Mad Max I had a video on it with the duct tape but I'm gonna finally put it on a new deck because um, I didn't like the deck on it and then I'll have a final video but yeah if you're gonna build DIY skateboards you really gotta take it baby steps just test out everything make sure your motor mounts hold up Make sure your motors hold up. Make sure your VSE holds up under the temperature. Make sure your battery holds up. Because I've been going through a hell of roads. Um, I, I have tutorials on how I build my uh, batteries. And they're just solid. Um, you know, I, I just learned a lot of things on YouTube. And also through trial and error. Um, so you got to really think about safety. The moment, The moment anything, if your battery ever... Um, turns off, you're you're pretty much fucked. On a belt-driven board, if your battery shuts off, you will fly off your board. That's number one thing. That is why if you use a BMS, do not go power your whole whole board through the BMS unless you're using a you know a BMS that's rated a lot higher than your maximum VSE settings for uh, battery max. Okay, so so very simple things, but VS itself, if you let VSC handle all the voltage, VSC will not let you do that because it will still let you run the board. Whereas if you let the BMS do it, you're screwed and you can kill somebody. Right? So some basic stuff. Um, I'll have more videos. Have a great day.